Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien on the morning of uh, Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. Sitting in for Paul Harvey this morning. Stand by for a special commentary. Well, Mr. Harvey did some of these commentaries, and I want to follow in his footsteps. And this is related to entertainment, specifically the Sci-Fi Channel, which rarely does anything good lately. It lost its way somehow in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, it went with sci-fi series that put everybody out there and it gained some support but uh, it just never did catch on with the people at large and it was because of the people who tried to do the series their own way like Battlestar Galactica they went from the 78 series and tried to do their own uh, and then you had uh, one of the good series that they did, Stargate SG-1, which took the movie Stargate in 1994 and incorporated some core of it in their series, something that Battlestar Galactica's uh, sci-fi channel did not do. And made the characters, well, that you couldn't understand. I could never get into Battlestar Galactica's sci-fi channel. And I grew up with the 1978 one. There were some series in sci-fi that had premise, but you never bothered to enlarge them. As in Farscape, that was a good show. Andromeda, well, uh, Kevin Sorbo was a good actor, but he didn't have nothing to work with there. I mean, you had the Commonwealth, and you try to explain the Commonwealth to somebody, and uh, well, uh, yeah, High Guards, Commonwealth, and you, you just didn't understand. And uh, who were the Sapatians either, or the Peacekeepers, you know, and stuff like that. As Farscape was uh, kind of like... Uh, uh, Flex, you know, that's another one that was uh, kind of funny there. But finally, after all the hits and misses, Sci-Fi's arc last night, I give it a 5 out of 5. And this is only the pilot episode, and they did in one hour what some pilot episodes that they tried to do, like Battlestar Galactica, two-hour episode and all the other ones that became two-hour episodes to bring the series into fold, never did. And mind you that whoever the showrunners of this one, and you put them uh, in uh, uh, an episode there for sci-fi, uh, that they're the writers of uh, Stargate and Stargate SG-1. Okay, they got together to do this. But you don't mention in the show that this is a direct descendant of a failed Canadian production, The Star Lost, back in the early 1970s. And remember, you didn't have very much money in the Canadians because nobody wanted to give them the big uh, budget that you would have like in Star Trek The Next Generation or Star Trek Deep Space Nine or even Battlestar Galactica 1978 Battlestar Galactica in this science uh, as a sci-fi channel didn't have a big budget and you can tell they seem to have a nice budget here because they're special effects and they got more into science than the rest of the people were. 
Star Lost was the same way in the Canadians. You had a group of three guys headed by Kier DeLay and two Canadian actors there. And for 16 episodes, because they cut them off at the end, they didn't have any money, they proceeded to take Spaceship Ark, which was like the same premise as the Ark. It was launched in 2285 as the last hope of mankind because the Earth was doomed. And it was the year 2790. Okay. So here they don't say what the year is. They just say that's four years later and the Ark, they get woken up. Well, it's the same thing with these guys, except that uh, they are in biospheres, okay? Here on the new one, you guys are doing what you would do um, in today's scientific. You put them in Kyle's, uh, you know, stasis chambers or cryogenics, whichever one you prefer, and you keep on going from there. Then you wake them up. Then the system woke them up. And they find out that they, their entire uh, people that ran the ship are dead. Command. And that's what happened in Star Lost. If you look it up in YouTube, the Star Lost. And you'll see, compare it to the opening episode of the Ark and the opening episode of Star Lost. It's almost verbatim there. Okay, they wake up, the uh, guys are dead, but instead of having a whole bunch of people running around the ship, as you do on this one, you just had three guys, because the rest of the people were in their biospheres, and what I mean is they had their societies that they put in these little biospheres, and nobody knew about anybody else, except for a select few people around the ship, which you see in later series of the uh, Star Lost. But these three main characters are there, and their main goal is to try to put the Ark out of collision course with a G-class star, okay? This has no... They haven't told you what the main goal is. What star are they going to go to? Is it Alpha Centauri? Or is it Tau uh, Tau Seti? Those are the two main G stars next to Earth. And I mean Tau Ceti A, okay? Alpha. I mean uh, Alpha Centauri Alpha. That's the closest G star we got to the sun. It's about the same size as the sun. And you got a star, you know, a B, which is a little smaller than the sun. Well, uh, same with Tau Ceti, which is 11.5 light years away from Earth. And they haven't told you much about Tau Ceti, but it, it, it's a star system, 78% the Earth size, I mean the Sun size. It doesn't have the problems that the Sun does. Does it have a solar system? Well, some people say yeah, and other people in the astronomy say no. They don't want to put anything in that. You're getting more information out of Proxima Century B than you're actually getting out of Tau Ceti. And Tau Ceti is an older uh, system like the Sun's system. But they say, oh, you got too much uh, comets and stuff in there. Well, they haven't put uh, James Webb to work on that one yet. And this is what I'm saying about them. But if they take the art, the way they take, they took Star Lost, they got a winning program here. As long as they keep the characters like they did in Star Lost, we know the budget sucked. I mean, the uh, space the special effects sucked, but the acting was, I would say, four or five level. The people that ran the show tried to do their best with what they had, and they kept the story up to scientific fact back in the early 1970s. Same as they're trying to keep the story up to scientific fact here on the Ark. This is your favorite alien, sitting in for Paul Harvey.
take a look at Star Lost, all 16 episodes, and then watch the arc and see if they can make the same thing work. They got a good shot here, but it's up to the two showrunners. Good day.